Ott Defoe, Blaine, Tennessee. It seems like every time we talk to you when we're in the state of Texas, we have the same conversation. So, uh, so this is this is your second off day. You uh, yeah, won is. your competition round of heavy hitters. Yep. Uh, so you turkey hunted so far today, <laughs> and um, you've come over to do a podcast, and you've done that because you you've caught him on Lake Palestine. Yeah. What a, what, a, what a shocker for everybody who's listening. Yeah. It, it, uh, it was. It was a couple of good days of fishing out there for me, um, and you know, I I had an okay practice, I guess, but. Uh, you know you really don't know what it's going to be until until you actually get out there and you know really start seeing what everybody's going to catch mm-hmm. and then yeah once the first day got rolling pretty good i was like man this is you know this is going okay i think i could you know this is going to look all right and um yeah i got out there the second day and, and got to catch them a little bit and you know it got it got pretty close talk got really close there at one point in time and uh thankfully i was able to catch a couple big ones and the last two i caught were both five pounders yep. and went from a four pound difference to 14 pound cushion you know at that point and i don't know if he kept trying to catch me but he didn't catch any more from there on yeah. and you know so i, I kind of took that as he backed off and just said hey he was going to go practice at that point but I, I did a little research into your your history in texas so so your your success your recent success here is is You've had a couple of top top tens previously, but mm-hmm. um, your your outstanding success over the past <laughs> handful of years is, and we've we've chatted about this before, but let's 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 analyze that a little bit. Yeah, like why why do you do so well now in Texas? Uh, I've had that question multiple times yeah. recently, and yeah. I, and the only thing I can come up with is that for the most of the tournaments we've had here, has been where you can fish shallow you know and i'm a shallow water angler that's what i like to do Mm -hmm. and the the tournaments that i've done well in the ones i've had you know had victories in and stuff that was all shallow i mean lake athens yeah i was cranking a dt10 you could say well that was kind of shallow kind of man i mean it was mid depth and you know kind of was kind of what and it wasn't like you weren't having to fish live sonar and you you know that kind of stuff for the most part it's a cover fishing oriented deal um for the times that we've been here and Mm -hmm. i like that it you know that works well with the way i like to fish and i think that's got something to do with it how's your uh how's your opinion of like palestine I didn't really know what to think of it. I didn't come pre fish when we were supposed to have red crest before the ice age hit. Um, you know, and, and what was that, 21? Um, so I didn't come look at it then or anything. And it, it is a lot like Fork in some ways. It's a lot like Conroe in some ways. Um, both have had okay success on, you know. Um, so quality of the fishery, I didn't, you know, I'm not seeing it, I think, when it's at its best. Um, but it's fishing solid this week for sure I, it definitely gets overshadowed by fork and for good reason yep. you know i mean fork is a, is a fantastic fishery but um it's got them yeah so you also had success on rayburn I and mean, that's kind of a completely different fishery than palestine isn't it yeah rayburn is very very different in my opinion you know obviously number one it's considerably larger um doesn't have quite the development you know that that palestine does especially on that you know mid to lower end i've actually not been on the upper end of palestine yet which would probably shock most people to know that um i, I didn't spend any time up there in practice and uh, and uh you know i think that that probably would shock a lot of people just because that's the way i typically fish i know it did rob newell but um yeah so it, it is very different from rayburn in the fact that i would consider this it's not quite an urban fishery but it is a lot more developed than uh than sam rayburn is but, but the lay of the land is pretty similar it doesn't have hydrilla but the actual to me the taper of the bottom kind of the substrate and what's going on underneath the water i think is pretty similar mm-hmm. kind of one of the the uh factors in this particular format is if you do win particularly if you win group group a's qualifying rounds you, you're off the water for mm-hmm. a pretty good amount of time yeah a couple of days this time this time of year especially and considering the weather we've we've had does that mm-hmm. make you nervous at all it doesn't um you know because i number one i was really glad i didn't have to beat my way through knockout round right i mean number one yeah. take that you know take yep. that in but what i saw from my first day there were a fair number of fish up there were in practice you know actually on the bed and stuff mm. so i had I had the day off group b's first day go back out on my second day there were a lot more fish that had pulled up and started spawning and given you know that it's been warm you know we've had a little bit of stuff kind of change some storm systems blow through and stuff and uh you know going into the championship round we're going to have the coolest night we've had mm-hmm. but the water temperatures are so warm it's not like those fish are just barely getting there you know i mean yeah, the water's right. 
upper 60s, maybe even 70s in some places. If it falls a couple degrees, it doesn't. It's not going to affect them, um, I don't think. So, you know, we, we've had a little bit of stuff come through, and and it does. I think that there's more fish coming, and then the fact that I don't, I I know I didn't have to target a fish on the knockout day that I may want to target on the championship day is a big factor for me. Gotcha. Right. Yeah, and how, how do you think that lightning from the last couple of days and all those crazy storms, how it's going to affect spawning fish? The lightning definitely does. It makes them a little weird. You know, I mean, I've seen that multiple times. Spawning fish, fish their own shad spawn too. It definitely does make them a little bit weird, but I think it affects it more negatively if you have it like the night before you're fishing. You know, so if you're, fish, you're fishing the next morning, you have it, especially into the early hours of the morning um i think that it does kind of freak them out a little bit but once they've had six or eight hours or so of that blown out i think that they'll typically will you know kind of move back in and and not be too bad you feel like you've uh like you've i guess maybe regained momentum i'm gonna say subpar Mm -hmm. one or two yeah Uh, no, I agree for, for, for you. Anyway, I agree. Yeah. Pretty high. Yeah, <laughs> I'm always nervous to stand up to no, I, like, uh, you know. no, I agree with you. But 100%. I mean, so you feel you feel like you've you've kind of regained momentum. It, it was it's a good feeling, yeah, to yeah. to have uh, you know to have won my round. I mean, that, I, I hate that this is not a points tournament. Yeah. You know, I mean, I really do. But yeah. Um, but yeah, it definitely does feel good to to beat your round. You know, win your round against this group of guys. So um, yeah, no, that, that was definitely a good feeling, and it and it was. <laughs> I don't want to ever want to say it's easy uh, because it never is, right. but there's times right. just when you make the right decisions sure. and it's yeah. like the decision you make was the right one. Mm-hmm. It's not like you have to fight your way through some bad ones or mediocre ones mm-hmm. to get to the good ones. It's like, it's just when you turn, it's mm-hmm. always the right turn. Right. And that's the way this tournament's been, you know, in, in the couple of days that I fished so far. And that's, that's the way a lot of last year was you know and a lot of a lot of the you know the stuff before that where this year starting off so far i'd make those turns i'd make those adjustments but they weren't the right ones you know other than at smith lake that was that was the one shining moment yeah. that, that yeah. i've kind of had where i've made an adjustment that mm-hmm. did work out right the other ones i've tried to try to do that and it just didn't come together gotcha it's funny so the the diversity of the fisheries over the, the next handful of of events mm-hmm. so here we have this particular lake and then we go to lake of the ozarks which is a Slightly zillion <laughs> miles of shore it's just it's just yeah. huge it's yeah. massive there's so much water there yeah. and, and so forth that i mean that, that has to that has to be kind of interesting and compelling to you mm-hmm. it, it is yeah I'm, I'm excited for that one i fished like those arcs twice before i fished yeah. an flw series there mm-hmm. in 2006 and got a check mm-hmm. um that was like the first year i really fished major level events um i'd fish toy up what we're toyota's now ever starts and stuff yeah that was the first really big step up i took was that flw series and then i fished the select we had there mm-hmm. whenever that was i right. can't even remember right. yeah. um that's the two times i've been there and that's the neat thing about lake of the ozarks like it is most of those ozark lakes they're great pattern lakes it doesn't matter you can drop in any section of the lake if you've got a pattern figured out you can run it anywhere that's the great part of it and i it's a lot like smith in that regard it's such a great pattern like and i really like that about it were yeah. those fall tournaments or were they kind of the same time frame they were the uh flw series was a fall tournament i think it was it was october i believe still mm-hmm. and then the uh the select was a summer tournament mm-hmm. so this would be was, different than oh yeah this time of year yeah definitely yeah. and that's the only experience i have really on kind of springtime around the same time of year would have been our first year on the bass pro tour when we fished table rock the, right. the sure. first time we fished table rock in, mm-hmm. in that year was pretty similar time of year um you know kind of in april early may so that you know it, it'll be similar to that i think mm-hmm. how do you feel about watts bar watts bar is it's close to home yeah and uh yeah. the first five and six pound bass I ever caught were on watts bar really mm-hmm. yeah um the first five pounder i caught on the number five shad wrap <laughs> on, on an island down in uh watch or no not watch creek in and spring city in the piney mm-hmm. um close to where we're taking off from so that'll, that'll be neat but it's watch bar is a fantastic fishery it has been um it's really uh, it has been getting a lot better a lot of our mm-hmm. stuff in east tennessee's kind of took a dip i'm not sure why just kind mm-hmm. of in a downward cycle a little bit cherokee's the shining star that's really not i've not heard weights on watch bar this year to know Got if it. it's 
average above below or mm-hmm. what but mm-hmm. all in all it's a it's going to be a great light to have really? a big tournament yeah. on it gets it's overshadowed a lot from chickamauga yeah, and yeah, everything else really it, it you really don't does. hear much about it yeah because it's it's yeah it's the lake immediately upstream of chickamauga downstream of of fort loud more mm-hmm. classic mm-hmm. and a lot of a lot of the big events have been and stuff and yeah. we had that cup last fall but um you know it, it's it gets lost between the two because there's not a real big city there. Spring City is, you know, the right. biggest city or yeah. Rockwood. And um, so those those communities have seen what Dayton has done and the success they've had. And they're like, hey, we can do this too. Because they've got the fishery to do it with mm-hmm. right there at Watts yeah. Bar. There's yeah. no doubt. How is, it, how is it different than Chickamauga? What are the differences we'll see? So it's, uh, you've kind of got two... You know, even on Chickamauga, you've got like the area up around Dayton where it's more river, a lot of shallow backwaters, flatter kind of terrain, mm-hmm. kind of that mouth of the Hiawassee, that type of stuff. And that's what you have on, on Watts Bar from kind of the forks of the river up. So you've got the Clinch River and the Tennessee River that come together. Mm-hmm. From there up, it's very similar to that. But then kind of the part of Chickamauga that you have from down around Possum, Sail Creek, that kind of stuff where you've got... You know, you've got kind of those straight gravel banks on the main channel. You've got some little small pockets, and then you've got some decent-sized creek arms. That's kind of what it transitions to immediately. Like, you don't really have that section on Chickamauga that goes from the Hiawassee to down below the, the bridge there. Or, or from really about the Hiawassee down about the next five miles. Like, that piece is not in Watts Bar. <laughs> but, but then you've got the rest of Watts Bar. Mm-hmm. You've got that. And then you've actually got more deeper water, mm-hmm. kind of like the extreme lower end of Chickamauga, where it's, you've got right. some bluffs and you've got some really right. steep gravel banks and stuff. Um, you know, we're there at a time of year when I don't know that the smallmouth will play a lot, mm-hmm. unfortunately, because it is a fantastic smallmouth really? fishery. Anymore. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I'm curious about that one. That's one that um, there uh, clearly there are a handful of guys who should should know it really well because they, mm. they live on it. Yeah, but I think by and large, it's uh, it's going to be a learning experience for most of the field. It will, yeah. I mean, you look at Wesley and John Murray mm. and Brandon Coulter's got a house there, and of course yep. Morgan lives really close, mm. and Michael Neal does as well. Yep. Um, I don't think they fish it much though. They I mean, really Neil don't. And probably don't. Yeah, Neil and Morgan don't. John and Wesley fish mm-hmm. it a good bit, yep. and Brandon fish it. He fishes it a good bit, mm-hmm. um, but like. I, Parker actually has a high school or their junior tournament there um, coming up pretty soon. So I'm, I'm going to get to captain them in that before, gotcha. you know, yeah. it's before our 30 day off limits. But, yeah. Um, yeah. but for me, it's like once a year, twice really? a year that I even, yeah. that I get to go down there. Um, mm-hmm. Growing up, we fished a ton of tournaments there, but really? it kind of quit having as many big tournaments, you know, when I was still fishing a lot of stuff around home. Hmm. Yeah. The one big one that we'd always go down there for every year was called the Norsecraft Open. They always gave away a Norsecraft bass boat uh, in it. It did have a motor, but they gave away a boat and trailer. Um, yeah. And so that was always a big draw every year. But, uh, they, yeah, they quit having that. You ever win ago. that tournament? No, no, I never no. did. I did win a rod one time in the nice. giveaway at the end You're of it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> You're a winner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Funny. Funny. Um, so... Every time I sit down with you, I want to talk about crankbaits, and I'm not going to change now. So, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, obviously, the OG line has been has been stellar, fantastic, and you were kind enough to welcome us to your garage yeah. the last time we were around. And and by the, are you staying at home for that one? Or are you? I won't. No, won't? I, I okay. won't. Because it's about an hour to to Spring City down there. It's, I'm yeah. looking at an hour twenty, hour thirty okay. from the right. house. So, so yeah, we, ways. we've it's rented a, a place. Down All right, there. dang it! I was going to I was going to invite <laughs> ourselves to your garage. Yeah. yeah. Now, I, now, if I do really well in the Group A, and I win my when my deal got two days off i'll definitely we're, go we're home cheering for you. Yeah. We're cheering for you then. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so but i was it, it's it's first of all just the you know building crankbaits is just a, a fascinating thing in general mm-hmm. i think anybody who fishes is just kind of kind of intrigued by it yeah but y- you were you were kind enough to kind of show us some of your some of your things and so forth uh, how much tinkering do you get to do these days with with your baits is it is it much yeah it's, still it's it's a fair amount and i yeah. mean on the og line you know i mean that's mm-hmm. it's a it's a constant process yeah. of you know of designing the next one of tweaking this one or shooting videos you know for for any of them actually right before this event we just shot the product video for the next bait mm-hmm. um you know so pretty pretty excited about that one i can't obviously say too much on it but i will i will say this whether i should or not but it's a square bill okay um, all right so that's that's what bait number three is gotcha. is coming is, gotcha. is going to be we'll so. see that at icast then it'll yeah. be at icast yeah, yeah. yeah. i yeah, was trying to poke some information out of matt jensen that he wouldn't tell me so he wouldn't tell you so, no, so i just probably made him mad by saying that but sorry <laughs> yeah. matt i hope it's all right. <laughs> um, but uh but yeah no it's uh yeah 
really excited about that. I think it'll, cool. I think it'll turn out. And I, the bait's excellent, and I think the product video yeah. will do a good job of showing that. How much? How long does it take you start to finish to to come up with a with a new bait? It depends. You know, like like slim and tiny were mm-hmm. were easy because they were baits already did. Sure. You yep. know, I mean, right. it was literally here's here's the bait, here's the bill, yeah, here's where everything goes. Take let's, it, let's run build with it. it. Yeah. Just you know, go. Don't change this. Just take it as is and make yeah. it. And that, it was super easy. Yeah this third bait it was a little bit more of a process because it wasn't it wasn't something i could i actually could physically make myself right. and then just right. turn around and hand back to them so gotcha. we had to go through a couple more rounds of samples and stuff to mm-hmm. to get that right mm-hmm. um you know so it just varies but basically based on on honestly on a lot of how much of it i can do at the garage mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. you know just with the shape of the bait and stuff if i can get it perfect yeah and then just send it to them say here's the action here's the here's the float rate here's the you know all the above that we needed to do it's pretty easy for them to get it right so when you when you get around an iteration of baits do you do you take them and fish them and take notes and if so how detailed are your notes i'm curious about this because i've been around some some bait constructions before okay and so i'm just curious how you do it yeah no i I do i'll fish them you know i I'm probably gonna run if I'm at home or anywhere I can. I want to run them in a pool first, yeah. because that way, if you make a long cast and a fish breaks you off, yeah, well, at least you knew something. <laughs> <laughs> so they always want the samples back, yeah. though. You yeah. know, but that's yeah. very important. But uh, but so I try to do that first, mm-hmm. just so I get a feel for you know what I what I've got to start with. But I do like to fish them. I mean, ideally, mm-hmm. you know, I want to because it, it's different of just pitching it in a pool and reeling it back than it is make trying to make a long cast by a piece of cover really air air the bait out see how the castability is mm-hmm. um and then to get a true feel for the diving depth too i mean that's a big thing that my pool's not long enough to get a, <laughs> get a real diving depth on i mean it's yeah. you, you can get an idea of it sure. but it's you're not yeah. really gonna know no lay downs to bang it off of no lay downs yeah. no yeah. and it's not yeah it's not you know 120 foot long pool or anything yeah. on the olympics <laughs> i swim a pool to try to make a cast across but yeah. um but yeah so i do like to do that and then as far as the notes go i don't i don't really write anything down i just know mm-hmm. i honestly a lot of times i can get the bait out of the box and look at it and be like man they missed this part or like, man that no that's gonna be this is gonna be really good or yeah. you know whatever it may be and and typically once i pull it i'm pretty close on where my eye tells me it's gonna end up being mm-hmm. um not always but but usually pretty close and I, yeah i don't write it down unless it's in an, unless they want my response in an email gotcha you know if it's <laughs> yeah. if, if they want it in an email just so it you know it's yeah. in black and white but usually it's column and, mm-hmm. and then I, I guess they they write the notes down from there but. Mm. so you already spilled the beans on a square bill what else is missing from the lineup other stuff mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no we, we've definitely i mean bait number four is already we've started the process on it um we know what number five is going to be okay um mm-hmm. but we've not begun any of the process on it I've, I've already had one round of samples for bait number four though yeah. um and they were they were close but i mean it was you know it, it was definitely still needed some tweaking on the action and the diving depth and different things but um but yeah that, that's we're already we're planning that far out ahead anyway so that's good mm-hmm. do you think you're a bait a year yeah schedule that's how yeah. that is bait yeah a year? it is yeah that's yeah. that's the schedule that's mm. the plan as of now so yeah, yeah. bait a year <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's some more g's coming yeah yeah, yeah. good so we go ozarks watts bar yeah get a little gap after that yeah we do have yeah. a little break in that's the right. summertime mm-hmm. it's pretty, yeah it's nice we'll have you know the kids yeah. will be out of school and have that's right basically all of june mm-hmm. most all of june and july, july. Mm-hmm. off you know so that, that part's pretty nice yeah and go yep. to new york in mm-hmm. august in yeah. august yeah go to cayuga um what's your experience on cayuga i fished a couple of leads there one was in august one was in the i'm gonna call spring i think it was june um the fish were still spawning heavy in that one um yeah, didn't Kevin won that one, right? Kevin won and that Jordan one. Jordan yeah. was right behind him. Yeah, Jordan might have been leading, and then I think Kevin won on the final. That's like, right. It was, mm-hmm. if I remember right, there was something weird with that. Like they had a strong south wind, and it blew a lot of cold water in, and nobody caught them good. Like, mm-hmm. like nobody mm-hmm. caught them good. Kevin was the only one that caught hardly anything. And I want to say he caught like 12 or 15 pounds where they had yeah. all been catching 18 to 20. Yeah. And, you know, he hung on and was able to win when, on a really tough final day. Um, I think that's the only two. How did you do in those? The uh, I got a check in both of them. The spring one, the earlier one, I barely missed the top twelve. I think, and I, I think that was one of the ones I missed by an ounce. Mm. <laughs> 
Hmm. I, I had like three that year. <laughs> yeah. I did. I, really? They were okay. 13th place finishes and they were all oh, one ounce. Mm-hmm. There. Oh, but if I remember right, it was there, lacrosse, and there was somewhere else. But hmm. I, I want to say there was three of them. That yeah, that's hard to do if you get that oh, yeah. close. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, well, I'm going to miss it again by <laughs> one ounce. Oh, geez. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, that one, that one was really fun. That, that one, it was like the season had just opened. Mm-hmm. All the fish were spawning still. And man, it, it was a mm-hmm. good time. I mean, that they weren't the, that especially the large mouth they weren't just like incredibly dumb to catch on the bed like they can be up north sometimes um but i i had figured out the bait that they wanted like everybody around me was throwing a you know stick worm mm-hmm. and i was throwing more of just a it was a bass pro finnick worm yeah a little bit lighter you know didn't sink as fast and I, I remember on the i think it was on the second day there were like eight guys in the area i was fishing and i was cold and i had like 16 pounds and nobody else in there had more than two <laughs> i mean it was like and i oh, knew right I, I knew right where the grass like, like i could see it on 360 on the grass lines and mm-hmm. stuff you know i could just put my talons down and just let it soak and then dunk and mm-hmm. start swimming off you know everybody else their stuff was sinking too fast and yeah. they, and they couldn't see right where to throw even when huh. the wind was up yeah so, and then so fun. then we go to then we go further north we go to Milan. that's right yeah mm-hmm. in september yeah mm-hmm. yeah uh fished what do we we have two I think we had two big tournaments up there. Mm-hmm. Uh, a couple. AOI championship. AOI mm-hmm. championships. I believe both of them. And uh, I had good finish in, the, in those, solid finishes. Um, one of them may have been in the top. Like that one, they cut to 25, I think, on the final day. And I made made that both times. I want to say both of them were eighth to 12th place mm-hmm. finishes or something. Um, and, you know, on that, you just need to catch big ones. But I, I remember catching good numbers you yeah. know good numbers of fish in that so th- that'll be one that'll be interesting to see if large might end up playing at all mm-hmm. yeah I, I remember fishing for them some when we were there yeah they before. get ignored there cause yeah big time smallmouth are huge yeah but it, it wasn't like i don't remember there just being tons of them either you know so uh, there'll, there'll probably be some guys figure them out a little bit but the smallmouth will it'll most likely dominate mm-hmm. yeah it's just that's a that place has got so many three and a half to five five and a half pounders in it it's silly that, the first time i'd ever been there we did a rapala we did a uh, media event up there mm-hmm. and they were still a lot of them were spawning and it's just <laughs> when you get in some places you could just spot lock or whatever and yeah. catch eight without moving the boat you know that we're all it's like oh, that's another four pounder <laughs> it never gets old no no no, no. yeah hmm. what um so the handful of things that have happened over the last couple of years especially so we've got um sort of a uh momentum with with forward facing sonar there there's that's number one that's mm-hmm. a, one of the biggest things clearly yep. um let's let's dig into that a little bit okay so how do you feel about your knowledge and learning curve yeah on that yeah with with mega live we've got a pretty good product mm-hmm. now we really do mm-hmm. i mean it's I, i'm able to i can see my bait most of the time at 60 sometimes 70 uh, occasionally in the, the right condition i'll pick it up at 80 um you know so and and i can see fish out in that that kind of range too um you know they get really clear at that 50 to 60 range is when you can really kind of discern you know well but um but that you know so we've got a we've got a very good you know very solid product at this point and and i'm 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 going to call myself proficient at seeing something and putting my bait in, on it, mm-hmm. you know, whatever it is, whether it's a fish or if it's a piece of wood, you know, target, whatever it is, because I, truthfully, I've done that for a long sure. time with 360, yeah. right. even though I couldn't actually see my bait come to it. Uh, you know, I know about where it is, about how far to make my cast, that kind of thing. And then you just have to feel it with your bait. Um, where now you can literally watch it sink to it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, as far as hitting my target, I'm, I'm pretty fair at that. I would say, but watching the fish and learning learning how the fish reacts it, that's still a part that i just don't i don't quite grasp yet yeah. um now i will say dumb fish i'm good <laughs> you know <laughs> that, at yeah. smith lake um yeah. and i wouldn't call the spots particularly dumb but they're more aggressive than an average large sure. mouth yeah um yeah. I, though the, at smith was the first place where i caught fish that i know were because of my life um and i mean i could see them you know i'd be fishing a point up there cranking shallow whatever was slim and just pan out and look oh, oh there sits one lay it down reel up grab my shaky head pitch to it watch my bait sink it goes past the fish the fish disappears my bait disappears thunk. I, 
I catch him, you know. I mean, so, but it wasn't like I had to fish for him. I simply put my bait in front of him. Yeah. There's a difference in fishing for him, you know, and really having to figure out what makes them tick versus just mm-hmm. it's a fish that you know will bite when something drops in front of his face. Gotcha. Those yeah. are the ones I can catch with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun though, isn't it? <laughs> it? It is. It really is cool, you know. I mean, to to look out there where you wouldn't normally be fishing, and be like there's just one and when when that fish bites like that i love it i mean it's you know because that, that was easy it didn't take a lot of time and it really didn't pull me away from what i was doing that's that's the part that for me is why there's times i just need to turn it off mm-hmm. and do what i'm doing you know because i'll mm-hmm. especially in our format the way it is i'm way more efficient and i'm going to generate more bites just doing what i'm doing than this leading me astray and pulling me this right. way and sure. yep. before i know it now i spent 10 minutes and it, it was only 10 minutes but I did that four times a day that's 40 minutes that i wasn't effectively doing what i should have been yeah, doing. you can make a lot of casts with the crankbait in that much time absolutely sure can. yep mm-hmm. do you uh do you plan to i don't want to say force yourself make yourself fish it more learn it better i have so far this year and it ain't worked out real okay well. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so i mean actually i mean going forward i'm gonna intentionally use it less except where i i know i have to like mm-hmm. a malax sure. sure i know i have to right cayuga probably gonna need to watts bar and and like those arcs i don't plan on using it mm. that's just okay. me yeah. you know and, yeah. and i think that's for every angler to decide you know for yeah, themselves what absolutely. their what their strong suit is mm-hmm. and I, I mean this is not trying to be bragging or boastful or in any way last year i finished second to arguably the best live sonar fisherman that's right yeah i never caught one on it yeah and they signed for one bad one truly one bad decision mm-hmm. at lake st Clair, mm-hmm. i would have won and and i mean that was just i, I took a gamble it was the wrong sure. gamble right. yeah. I had, had i made the right gamble i win so if if and as many as he caught on it last year mm-hmm. i didn't use it not once right right i was one decision away from angler of the year yeah, yeah. so yeah. you know I, do i have to have it yeah or does to, any angler have to have you it? have to decide what's going to work for you that's i mean that's right. the that's the one thing and this is just not just fishing just just life in general people mm-hmm. see something that that is, is the deal yeah and they figure out well i have to go use the deal yeah and it, not, it might not be the deal for you at yeah all. yeah and that's i've seen that and talked to some high school anglers and stuff this week and stuff and that's you know a lot of them hurt you know i mean they see it and they're oh, yeah. i mean you know us promoting it and, and there are times when it's unbelievable and, mm-hmm. it's, and it is a lot of fun and it's mm-hmm. super effective yeah but there's a lot of times you're just beating your head against i know from experience <laughs> beating my head against the wall yeah yeah man yeah the the it, nothing out there the boat the electronics the troll none of it catches a fish on its own <laughs> not true. a bit of, not not a bit of it and and, yeah. and wheeler even said that in his aoy speech he's like it's it's not the you know he's, he was talking about the boat he started off fishing in and his dad told him it's not the boat that catches a fish you know it's the angler and it's the same for your rods reels your bait your line you gotta you know you need to have good stuff especially as far as yep. the, your line and your i mean you need quality equipment but none of that stuff is going to catch one on its own <laughs> a lot of people think that they think it's magic oh, you yeah. just buy it and they you, do. you're ready yeah. to go yeah. yeah i mean they think an og slim is going to catch one everywhere they throw it mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's pretty good it but, yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't it really doesn't <laughs> yeah so you're uh fresh in from a from a couple couple days of turkey hunting yeah 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 yeah, the evening and the morning okay yeah Yeah. successful in one of them sounds successful in the evening yeah got out there and it was it was about an hour and a half west of dallas um and and yeah got to go kelly kj lined it up for me had Mm -hmm. a a friend that's got a got a place out there and um and they they were going anyway to to go out to the property and they were nice enough to let me tag along with them that's awesome you you have to have lots of turkey hunting around you don't you our, our, yeah east tennessee, tennessee. is really good yeah. yeah it's really good turkey hunting i've just not been home during the season yeah, yet right yeah <laughs> timing is tough for you yeah tur- turkey hunters yeah turkey hunting. That's it right. is but mm-hmm. after this tournament's over with um here at heavy hitters 
there's not much else going to be done around the Defoe house for about eight days <laughs> other than turkey hunting. Nice. Jenny's aware of that. She's, she she's aware, is that. aware of that. Yeah. yeah. Maybe a little bit absent for a while. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Now your kids are old enough, huh? at least one of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The Abby's 14, yeah. but she's like deer hunting is the only thing she wants into. Really? Um, Lizzie's not much, much on the hunting. She'll frog gig. But that's about mm-hmm. it. But yeah. now Parker is the, he's the turkey hunter. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Has he, has he killed one? He has killed uh, three. Really? Yeah, he killed one last year and two the year before. That's great. Yeah. That's super yeah. healthy. He, he's 10. Yeah, he'll be Dang. 11 in June. So, yeah. <laughs> That's a good start. That yeah. age. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah no it kidding. is. And, and, I mean, he's he's pretty patient at it. I mean, he, he really yeah. is uh, probably more so at turkey hunting than he is fishing or deer hunting. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, he, but he's – He's been on some good hunts, some really fun ones, and and it's been it's been good. It's all been around the house there, which yeah. is makes it fun, yeah. and and pretty much he and I. So yep, yeah. yeah. So so your upbringing when you were a, when you were a kid, did mm-hmm. you fish and hunt all the time? Is that the same? We did not thing? hunt really. Yeah, my dad actually he had he had went in partnered with some buddies, and they mm-hmm. had bought some land um, that you know he was going to take my brother and I hunting on, and I, to my knowledge, we deer hunted it one time. Mm. We didn't see anything that morning, and we rode four wheelers that afternoon. Okay, <laughs> and I was like, I don't care if I ever go deer hunting again. I mean, because I did. It was just, it was not for me. Yeah. Now, I yeah. mean, it was. We were just sitting on the ground in the woods. It wasn't blind, you know. It wasn't wasn't the way a lot of hunting is done nowadays. Sure. You know, yeah. um, not even stands or anything. And yeah, um, and yeah, I mean, I was like at. I'm gonna say I was 12 or 13, yeah. somewhere in there, maybe 14 when we went and did that. Mm-hmm. I would much rather be trying to catch a fish out of the ponds right, over there, right for right. you. Yeah, because by that time you'd already you'd already gotten, oh yeah you'd already gotten the fishing thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I had the fishing bug pretty pretty yeah. bad at that point. Yeah, let's run through that story again. So you guys went to a you went to a uh, you went on a trip to Okeechobee. Okeechobee, correct? yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And you yeah. were nine years old. Nine years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and that was I, I told told a, the guy that took me turkey hunting, but get a little bit about that. And that's that place is so different from mm-hmm. east tennessee mm-hmm. you know i mean to go to south florida in the swamp alligators swimming around and great big cypress trees and spanish malls hanging from them and you know, we, we'd hired a guide and i mean we'd you know put the boat in we go through the locks at clewiston in the dark <laughs> and we take off down the rim canal you know and then he hangs a ride i want to say it was either would have either been uncle it would have been uncle joe's next one all around is uh what's the one that comes out in the back of the monkey box uh, uh seven mile some kind of mile some uh, thing, yeah. mile something yeah that, that had to be the one it was and and i you know knowing a little bit about the lake now i'm assuming we were in moonshine bay mm-hmm. you know because we come out of that we come through that canal and run out that cut and then we just you know hang out in the boat trails and, and he's mm-hmm. you know we're running through boat trails where uh, being from east tennessee you don't ever get that close to something you know we're running <laughs> right by these reeds and stuff yeah. now and it's, yeah. i mean I, it's no big deal to me now but at nine yeah it's like this is the coolest thing ever you know so it's still cool though oh, it, it's yeah. so different than everything yeah. else yeah. yeah i mean it's just yeah. an odd experience you know and, mm-hmm. and so to do that at nine years old was like man this is just the coolest place ever you're out in the wilderness and, and yeah. the swamp and, and then we stop and start catching fish and yeah it was a neat experience yeah and so then you continued you started to fish tournaments at what age i was nine the first tournament really? i fished with my dad yeah like mm-hmm. we we came that trip was i may have actually been 10 maybe when i fished the first one but it was i just can't remember exactly what month that trip was um i feel like it was in september which is when my birthday is and, and maybe it was earlier in September and we came home and like fished a tournament the next weekend kind of thing or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was on Cherokee um, was that first tournament we fished. It was an angler's choice. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, that was on Cherokee. But yeah, that was, that was when, yeah. when we head over heels into it. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, you just did a team tournament with your dad. So there wasn't like the junior stuff like there is oh, no. now. And yeah. Your son's in that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It was just a regular team. Tournament. It was the angler's choice tournament is what the tournament trail was, um, you know, which is a big team trail forever. And, uh, and that was a division that was there in East Tennessee. James Knuckles was the guy who was running that. He ended up starting his own trail either the next year or the year after called bite B I T E. And still, he actually still runs, runs cool. those now but um yeah. but yeah that was the that was the first one i fished with my dad and my my brother sonny fished with another friend of ours and because that was always the thing there's two dad and two of us so we had to have two boats you know it could yeah. obviously couldn't all three fish in a boat so yeah. i fished with dad a lot of tournaments and then 
So I would fish with somebody else, and then we'd flip flop in other ones, and uh, I'd fish with somebody else. How old were you before you fished against somebody your own age? <laughs> yeah, that was a long time. I yeah. mean, uh, yeah. yeah, it was a long, long time. I yeah. mean, I, I'm gonna say twenty. <laughs> I, I mean, I truthfully, I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, when I was eighteen. I started fishing BFLs when I was 16. Yeah. And now uh, you want to talk about a weird phenomenon? <laughs> going At that point in time, going to a Walmart parking lot, right? That's yeah, where the meetings sure, were. Sure, And they go through the par- the rules meeting and everything. Boat number 37, Ot Defoe and Tyler Brinks. And Ot Defoe at 16 walks up to yeah, Tyler Brinks sure, or Joel Shangle sure. at 40-something yeah. years old. And they look at you like, <laughs> <laughs> who are you? I said, hey, I'm, I'm the boater for tomorrow. <laughs> really? <laughs> you have hair on your chest <laughs> i mean that's like you know maybe next week yeah, yeah exactly yeah because i mean i was i was a little bit yeah. of kid at 16 yeah. too yeah. you know sure. but um it was no it, that was a weird phenomenon to, to be doing that I, I truly that's a really good question i don't know how old i was before i fished against somebody else that was my own age oh, man yeah. yeah yeah and so fishing that part of the country <laughs> there's some pretty good fishermen who live yeah, in east tennessee the and volunteer division right the, well back then uh, at first it was the choo choo division that okay. was pre yeah, that sure. was pre volunteer yeah um so yeah. choo choo competitive would, oh yeah. it was super Gosh, competitive yeah. I mean, we, we would start we would fish in like a um would go up to cumberland but they'd also fish maybe uh they didn't often go to chickamauga but may go down to uh i mean they'd fish watts bar they'd fish cherokee douglas but that i mean they moved around more than like the volunteers strictly east tennessee now um but yeah that, that was the the choo choo mm-hmm. but i actually liked the well, it's funny. The first year I fished any BFLs, I fished the uh, maybe it was a mountain division. Yeah, so there was a mountain division that was more up around the house. The Choo Choo division was was more Alabama central, mm-hmm. um, no, or northern Alabama. The mountain. The first year I fished any, I fished the mountain division. I fished like one on Watts Bar, one on Cherokee. I may mean, have fished one more. I don't know if I fished just two or three that year. Mm-hmm. But the next year, I'm like, I wanted to fish the Alabama lakes. We, we'd had a camper on Lake Weiss forever as a kid. Mm-hmm. We'd go down there two or three times a year. And I really liked Lake Weiss. Kind of like I like Texas. I mean, it's yeah. just shallow water, yeah. shallow lake. And we always caught a lot of fish down there. Um, and that, the first tournament that year was on Gunnersville, and I got a check. And I think the second one was on Weiss, and I finished third. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I, But I had all my weight. I, I remember this like it was yesterday i had all my weight in the first hour and a half and this like, like they were fish spawning they were still pre-spawning and stuff and i had like 16 and a half pounds in an hour and a half mm-hmm. i think i caught five or six and i actually caught them in the cove where our camper was because i mean i knew every yeah. stump in that deal sure. i mean yeah. i'd walk the banks when the water was down yeah. i knew every i mean every little corner of the grass were one set and i went dunk, 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 all the way around that thing and caught i think i'd caught six and cold once i had like 16 something yeah if I'd caught another three and a half, like three or three and a half pound of the, the whole rest of the day, I'd have yeah. won the tournament. Mm. And I, I mean, Dude. I caught a million of those there, you know, oh. back in those days. But you yeah. still think about that? I do. Yeah, <laughs> I absolutely do. Because I never won a BFL. That was like yeah. that would have been the easiest one probably for me to ever win. Yeah, yeah. When did you make the jump up to what's now the Toyota series? What age? I was eighteen, I believe, okay. the first year I fished fished the Toyota or ever starts in. But yeah, mm-hmm. Toyota series now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you got your first win at what age? Uh, it was two thousand nine. 2008 was when I won one on Santee Cooper. Santee Cooper, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 2008. So I'm 85. So what is that? 20. Mm-hmm. That'd have been, it was before my birthday. So 22. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. And and then and 2006 was the first year that I had stepped up to something bigger, which was the, the FLW series. So I was 20 when those started that year. And then the following year, I was 21 when I started on the FLW tour. Gotcha. So right. I still wasn't fishing against anybody my age. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you've, you've said this before that you, when you when you were 13, 14, 12 years old, you were fishing against grown men. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole, the whole point I'm trying to make here is that he yeah. just, you know, <laughs> and you won Angler of the Year. I mean, you did you did well mm-hmm. as a kid. Yeah, fishing against grown men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it definitely did. I mean, that was, and I, and I look at that and and I what high school fishing has done for fishing at this point in time oh, yeah. is incredible there's mm-hmm. so many more kids into fishing because they don't have to do that like i did you know i mean if they want to go fishing they can compete against people that's you know mm-hmm. kind of in, on a level playing field with sure. them yeah i wouldn't change what i did though because yeah. i 
them guys were, they weren't going to be nice to me because I was a 12 year old kid you know what I mean now I was and in the team tournaments I mean you're I was fishing with an adult you know somebody who knew the lakes and stuff a lot um and and I look at I look at some of those guys and thankful for in a lot of ways they were making a sacrifice you know i mean they could have been fishing with somebody else that was their own age that would have had equal abilities and mm-hmm. yeah and uh and you know said that ah, i mean you know is it worth worth you know taking this kid and trying to teach him something and yeah. you know or, or am i gonna have a better shot at winning this tournament if i fish with somebody else so you know i'm really thankful for, for those guys that invested that in me i bet you're a pretty good student <laughs> that particular uh, yeah. I, I feel like i've I, I mean, I tried to be, no yeah. doubt. And, uh, I mean, I can remember Jason Nichols, who is who I fished with a lot mm-hmm. growing up. Mm-hmm. And he, the biggest thing he taught me, a couple big things. Work ethic was a huge one. But number two was just not never wasting any time. Mm-hmm. I mean, we would – he was – because he had fished some top 150s and, and stuff. And, I mean, we would we'd be fishing a point, running a pattern, whatever. And he was one of those that would cut the key off and be on the front deck and set the troll motor down, you know, before, as the boat was sitting down sure. kind of deal. Yeah. Um, I mean, that was pretty commonplace. That, that wasn't, like, out of the norm. Retine at the boat that the boat that he had was a, a bass cat, and that ended up being – we bought that boat from him, and that was the first boat I, I fished big tournaments out of. Um, but it had a hand throttle, didn't have a foot throttle. But he'd be running to the next place with a rod laying in the floor retying – while he's driving to the next place <laughs> no waste of time man you know and that was what i learned from him a yeah. lot was it's like if mm-hmm. if i do all this and i get six extra casts in a day mm-hmm. it was worth it sure sure yeah yeah you've been involved in some last second i mean literally one one cast difference makers mm-hmm. so yeah really, yeah the more cash you can make the better yeah yeah absolutely and I, I find myself sometimes getting lazy in that regard you know being a i don't want to say lazy but not i'm not rushing as much as i could be mm-hmm. you know yeah. i could take it up another level but th- i mean yeah that was definitely something he he showed me how important that was yeah. well so we're doing this the day before you fish the championship at heavy hitters on lake palestine we'll see how we'll see how accurate this is once this comes out so <laughs> how much how much weight do you think it will take to to win the day tomorrow let's pull up score tracker to sure to take a look why not I've been watching live all day, you know, so trying to get some good tips on these. <laughs> no, just just kidding, Aaron. But serious, don't don't take that too serious. Um, yeah. Well, Junior has fell all the way to fifth, which mm-hmm. is incredible. It cuts at twenty four. That's that's even more incredible. Um, they've really caught him a slap. I, is it over? I guess it's over. Um, looks like Burge won with thirty three. Yeah, and the cut ended up being twenty four. Uh, we had a weather delay, so we did have a weather delay. It's still going. It is still, still going. going. Okay, still the going. timer's yep. up mm-hmm. on it. So okay. Um, either way, um, thirty-three. Man, I don't know. It, the the deal, the weight's going to be lower. I'm not going to say lower than that. Lower than it could be, just because of the fact that minimum weight's at three pounds instead of two pounds. You can catch some right. nice fish. It ain't going to count. True. That that would right. have added. Yep. You know. So just you got to factor that in, but. Um, I think 40 is an achievable number, you know, because um, you're you're going to end up averaging better than three pounds. So, you know, if you caught 10, if you if you were able to get 10, that would probably put you around 40, I, I think. I don't know that you'd quite average four pounds, but um, I think 40 pounds are pretty I, – I, I would like my chances with 40. 40. I'll say that. Didn't you say 40? Yeah. You said 40, right? My guess was on fantasy was like 39. So yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So with that uh, three-pound minimum, how would that have affected your first two days of fishing? I mean, if greatly, we, if we had three pounds yeah. on those days, yeah. Like what percent are over three pounds of your I, scoreables? I think of my second day only two. because I think I had two that I had two five-pounders, um, but I don't think any of the rest of them were over three. Um, the first day, now I had, I know, three four-pounders – at least another three pounder or maybe two um so i'd have to go back and look exactly for sure but it certainly would have cut it down yeah. significantly. are you going to change how you're going to fish tomorrow you know i mean there were fish i was fishing you know but being able to sight fish it's like okay this one is probably a two pounder let me fish for it um you know so i'll be able to judge that a little better so there'll be fish i spend more time on because they are big ones 
versus if they didn't act right, I'd keep moving on because I, I'll be able to catch the next two pounder, two and a half pounder easier than I can catch this, you know, four or five pounder. Um, so there'll be fish I spend more time on just because they are bigger. But the good part is if I look up and it's two and a quarter pounder, I'll just keep going, mm-hmm. you know. So I I think some of that will even out a little bit. And that's kind of what I'm hoping for is that it, that it actually pushes me to just like pass up fish that were not as easy to catch and that you find some because it's not necessarily the bigger they are the harder they are to catch sometimes a big one i mean you can catch it one flip you know mm-hmm. so it could work out to where it's like well i was going to spend 15 minutes on this two pounder but i put the troll motor down and here's a four pounder tray to eat my stuff mm-hmm. you know so it could it could work out just as well you've also got that temptation of a hundred thousand dollar fish just hanging out there yeah i mean one how, cast how yeah. long how long would you take if, if you pulled up on a yeah what looked like a true giant like how long would you be willing to fish for it i mean it depends a little bit on the mood of the fish but mm-hmm. it, on tomorrow i i wouldn't be afraid to spend an hour or two hours mm-hmm. on a big yeah. one i mean if it's like if it's a 10 pounder uh, and i mean it's the fish i'd spend i'd spend a period on her <laughs> if, if she's if she's hanging around stuff so, yeah you know yeah. if you yeah. pitch your bait in there and it's gone for 10 minutes eh, yeah probably not right but if if yeah if she's hanging around pretty good hmm. I, i'd spend because if you catch big fish and you finish last you make more than the guy that wins a tournament <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. so i mean that yeah that's the way it works in this deal mm-hmm. that's right i'm not gonna bet against him Mm. You gonna bet against him? I'm not gonna bet. No, we're in Texas. In so. Texas, here. I'm not gonna bet. Not you need a house down here somewhere. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Jenny, yeah. Uh, uh, Jenny and I've talked about that. It would be a fun place to have a, have, a, have, a, have a place. I don't know when my schedule when whatever gets to come, but no, it would be right. a fun place yeah. to go. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. What's your uh, What's your latest on your uh, your YouTube exploits? You still, still? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I'm still working hard on that, mm-hmm. and uh, and and JD's done a good job of keeping mm-hmm. keeping our content rolling on there. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's it's a it's yeah, still trying to keep a lot of good stuff pumping out and a lot of good information and um, that Jenny and I, uh, the ministry deal we do there with JOJ and um, yeah, just keeping everything going there. It's been been growing good. It's been it's been fun. You know, Jenny gets frustrated because it doesn't grow any faster than it does. Um, yeah. But I mean, that's just YouTube. I it mean, is. for the most yeah. part. So yeah. it's it's neat to see. You know, at Redcrest, we talked to a lot of people who who mentioned it and uh, and mentioned specifically the JOJ that Jenny mm-hmm. and I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, it was just nice to hear that the people actually talk to people that are like, man, I you know I appreciate what y'all are doing there, whether it's on the ministry side and or you know just the fishing information, mm-hmm. just to hear that yep. response from yep. them. Are you on like a a schedule? Is it? this yeah. time of, this time of the week that time of the week we well, have, what is that schedule? yeah we have a pretty pretty set schedule as long as we've got the content you know ready to go the joj is every sunday evening 6 30 the only like we film all the episodes except the first sunday of the month that one's always alive so you never know what you're going to get there sure, if sure. it's going to be yeah. a face if i'm out of town if it's a facetime yeah. with jenny yeah. and uh or what it is but yeah. yeah we do that first sunday live every every time and that one may be at 6 30 it may be at 8 gotcha but gotcha. that one's the only one that varies a little bit but the guy who, who shoots and edits the other ones we're always good about having the rest of the month up at 6 30. Gotcha. for the rest of the schedule it's always we typically do a tuesday friday i believe is is what we try to do try mm-hmm. to do two other videos each week gotcha. um sometimes it owns a only ends up being the tuesday but we ideally we try to have three videos a week yep yep so you typically have have fished when you go to bass pro tour events like you've taken you know your your, your small boat and you've gone to different places is that mm-hmm. is that the plan again this, but, this time well, that's on cups where i bring my little gotcha. boat yeah gotcha. that's on cups yeah. um sometimes on the bass pro tour yeah like you know have an off day or something mm-hmm. I'll, I'll go film on, on another body of water yep um and we've done that we did that once this year maybe we did somewhere um when when did that instead of doing that here i turkey hunted gotcha <laughs> yeah jenny, jenny had said i should go back to athens and fish by that bridge um which wouldn't have been a bad idea but no, I, was I got like, a good story for you uh, before this tournament i brought my boat so yeah stopped by athens on the way went over there and caught one on a did you? dt14 this okay, night. Yeah, I was, yeah yeah i was surprised nobody was there really? I was like yeah. let's see there, there's any fish here yeah got a three and a half pounder right away no so, kidding yeah, yeah. Well, still there yeah. waiting for you yeah you know, that's, <laughs> that's good to know yeah no that's i like that spot yeah, yeah i know you do yeah. yeah yeah i remember during that tournament we were just right there on the shore basically watching you yeah right there at the ramp yeah and they're watching yeah yeah that was, that was pretty that was a really cool one that was right before the world shut down with covid but there was yeah. there were a ton of people there you know watching and stuff mm-hmm. it was 
mm-hmm. to catch yeah. them right in front of the ramp like that was yeah. that was pretty awesome yeah. yeah 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 so this event will be interesting too because we'll have a i believe we'll have a pretty decent group of people after mm-hmm. after it lines out tomorrow so yeah I think that's that's one thing you come off a of red crest where there's just a ton of people yeah yeah showed up yeah it's gonna be fun yeah it yeah. was it was great I, I wasn't at the final you know at the final day mm-hmm. of work the expo on friday and saturday yeah um so i wasn't there on sunday but we were watching it live and and you know of course watched the final moments and i actually went to the boat ramp and and mm-hmm. told all the guys congratulations and especially bobby and yeah. uh yeah you know so that that was that that was really really cool to get to see him him there and uh you know just tell him good job but yeah that watching it on live and when they got back and you know went through the ceremony and stuff it was i was so proud to see how special of a moment that it was you, you know because you yeah I, I hated it for dustin and even a little bit for edwin i mean yeah the first two were kind i mean mm-hmm. they you know this is our first truly this was our first real try at it that's right and i was yep. extremely proud of the way that mm-hmm. it all turned out i really yeah, me was. too yeah, yeah me too it was good yeah yeah it was good yeah that was because you want i mean when you when you win an event like that you want that moment to be special mm-hmm. and it it looked like it was very special yep indeed yeah indeed so you uh you own you own bass pro tour trophies you own cup trophies you could win a belt a heavyweight belt for heavy hitters this oh is, this yeah is it's a belt this, that's this right belt. that's right you don't own a belt trophy dude i have no belt all right well no. I mean, I got a groove belt I'm we'll wearing, see. but that's kind <laughs> that's of different. Right. Right. It's not a heavyweight; yeah. it's by design. We'll, we'll see what we'll, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Then maybe yeah. maybe the next time we talk to you, you'll be a belt owner. As I'll well. be a belt wearer. Yeah, yeah that'd yeah. be pretty cool. Yeah, and, and and that other little trophy that goes with that sure single sure. fish wouldn't be bad. Either. No, I wouldn't. Yeah, no, I wouldn't <laughs> check with the it. Check. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thanks for dropping by. I appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah.